So we're down here at the Scott Savannah today, and this is one of the first prairie remnants that I came across. And I burned this place for the first time. It would have been fall of 2020. And so we burned this place again this last fall, fall 2021. And then I did another burn in here this spring because it didn't burn everything up. But you can see all these bunch grasses here behind me, these black clumps right here. These are bunch grasses. This is little blue stem. And so these bunch grasses, they grow like a vase instead of our like non-native yard grasses, pasture grasses that grow a sod, those are turf grasses. Those aren't native grasses. These native grasses are bunch form, they're bunch grasses. So they form basically what was, what is kind of like a tiny forest for rabbits and quail and things to run underneath. You can see all these trails through here in between these bunch grasses and that protects these uh, small animals from predators, but it also is good for their babies. You see this bare soil in between these grasses? This bare soil is super important for baby quail to run through because those baby quail, I mean, they're the size of a quarter. Their legs are teeny tiny and they can't run across sod grass. That'd be like me or you running across just a pile of logs, it's all jumbled. It'd be really hard to do. And so they can't keep up with their mom. They have to have this exposed soil. So that's why we do fires. That's why grasslands need burned. These ecosystems are adapted to fire. And just like this, these short leaf pines here behind me, they need fire as well. So there's these prairie barren type soils um, that have a bottom layer of limestone uh, here in North Alabama, have a lot of short leaf pine on them. They have a lot of uh, different oaks, chinkapin oaks, post oaks, things like that. And so these are all indicator species, uh, but the biggest indicator that this place gave me was all this little blue stem that's still here. This isn't your sage grass or your bushy blue stem. This is a uh, little blue stem and uh, it had tons of it. And so that first fire I did two years ago exposed all of this soil and it exposed the seed bank and it hadn't been burned in decades probably. And so that allowed all these wildflowers to come back to life. Their seeds were still in the soil. So this past year, we documented over 65 species of wildflowers that returned to this place. And uh, that was pretty, pretty awesome to see. So those flowers bloomed last year and created seeds because we allowed them to. We didn't keep this place mowed or anything. We allowed them to make seeds. They dropped those seeds. And so this year, there's gonna be even more wildflowers germinating from this seed bank after this fire. So it's gonna be pretty exciting and we'll have to keep you all updated.